Kitchen Old School on realagriculture.com is supported by Bear Crop Science. Yeah, well, you know, um, most, most people realize that the most sensitive stage for heat stress in canola and in a lot of crops is the reproductive stage and that means from flowering on to you know, seed set and early seed fill. And the, the question though comes up with just at what temperature does you know, the heat, heat loss start to accumulate? And um, there's been a variety of different studies that have looked at that, but a lot of them are in greenhouse or, or growth room conditions, so it's not totally applicable to a field situation where you can have dry winds, et cetera, like that. But, and, and the results do vary somewhat depending on the researcher and the techniques. But when I look, look at it overall, there's probably a window of there of 27 to 30 degrees Celsius where there's a, uh, the, the yield starts, loss starts to be significant, you know, so more than 10 or 15 percent. And, and then question often comes up, well, which part of the plant is suffering more? Is it the pollen or is it the, the, the ovaries that give rise to the pod and, and, and the seeds? And it's actually both. So um, um, you, you can't um, differentiate between which part is, is more vulnerable. Yield losses can, can be very significant if the heat stress occurs at a period when it was a very good chance of pod set and then later on when the heat stress is removed the conditions deteriorate from moisture or whatever and the plant can't compensate then actually the yield loss can be very very bad but in other situations we may, may get a week of hot weather and lose some pods but then we get very good growth conditions later and the plant will compensate as long as the fall is uh, fall frost is are late enough that allows the crop to, to complete maturity, you don't sometimes see a yield loss. So uh, it, it bit depends certainly a bit on, on what the conditions are throughout the year. With canola being such a, what we call a plastic plant, the ability to compensate it is very, very large. Um, you know, it, generally we like to see the, the first part of flowering be the most successful. So that the first two weeks for sure. We want to see most of the pod set formed in the first two weeks because for one thing in a lot of our areas we have a, a, a short growing season that if we delay the successful pods too late we're going to run into a fall, fr fall frost problem and a grade loss. So you know so I would say that if your crop has been flowering for three weeks and you've had heat blast you know on and off um, anything after that is probably not going to be that successful. Now if you seed it very, very early, you know, in Southern Alberta, for example, seeding in middle of April some years or earlier, um, and you get heat stress and then it rain and, and the heat stress is, you know, relieved, that's not as probably a situation where you might see as big yield losses around the comb, where if we don't get the, you know, good, you know, pollination and sets it in the first two weeks, we're setting ourselves up for a green seed problem. So it really depends on, on, on the conditions and just how much you know yield loss there is for the early part of flowering. But if you've had if you had to order it from Sears, you would say I want I want my crop pollination to be very good in the first two weeks and then it, the plant knows that it's set enough pods, enough seeds, and it'll kind of send out the hormone signals to stop. The, the later branches and later flowers, they won't be very, very successful and the crop will mature much ev more evenly and earlier. So that's the ideal, but we very rarely get ideal. <laughs> um, in, in a lot of areas, um, the heat obviously is, is more likely to occur in mid to later summer. So if you could see it earlier, you, you have a better chance of avoiding the heat, heat stress. But um, we can't predict that for any given year. And so some, some producers feel that by staggering their, their seeding over a week, they might have a better chance between the fields of, of hitting or missing the, the worst of, of the heat stress. And so that's, I guess there's a couple strategies to do that. There are no products that we can apply or you know, the fertilizers, anything that will, that will really help with, with heat stress. Um, and we haven't had a lot of good genetic studies to indicate that that we have actually selected for heat stress in, in our in our canola, um, and that's something that there is some research that shows there's some variability. So it's something that maybe there's some potential in the future for that.
Um, well, the, I mean, the yield loss is from, from just heat alone. And, and, and that's one of the issues, though, is, is when you get heat, often that's a dry period. And so you start um, aggravating the heat stress with some drought stress in some cases. So sometimes it's very hard to differentiate. So the worst scenario is, scenario is having heat stress and, and moisture stress. And therefore you can have, you know, easily, you know, 50% yield reductions. Now, if you just have a week of hot weather, and it was at the prime you know, productive period, um, yeah, you might see a 10 or 15% yield loss just from that one from, from that heat wave. So um, it's something though we can't really you know, manage or do much about, at, you know, and we have to kind of live with it. From, from the research, the stages are from when it starts to bolt, when the plant starts to send up that flowering head. You know, you think about any, anything where you get quite rapid growth, um, of some part, that's when you, it's probably more sensitive to a stress. So that's the bolting stage. And then of course the flowering period, it, it has also some very rapid growth of the pollen tubes as they're trying to pollinate the flower, they're very rapid growth. So those, those are the stages that are quite sensitive. So from bolting until early, early potting seed set is probably the most sensitive stages. Now, as you get heat stress later on, as, a, as the seeds are starting to fill, um, it, it doesn't lower your yield so much, but and it does it by redu reducing the seed size and a bit of seed abortion. So and affecting a bit of the probably the quality of the oil too, oil content, etc. So it does have ramifications later on in the growing season. But from the yield point of view, the biggest losses occur from that bolting to the you know early potting stage. Okay, yeah, when, when there's heat stress during um, the seed setting, obviously, you know, the, the seed size is, is getting smaller. That's one of the, re, you know, repercussions. And when you get a smaller seed, you have a lower oil content. So that's a big quality factor for canola. So uh, reduce oil content. But then the actually the oil profile changes under heat stress. And we'll get a little bit more saturated fatty acids, but we'll also get more free fatty acids, which, which is a, you know, a, a undesirable characteristic and then you actually end up sometimes with um, um, some discolored seed we call them brown seed etc and there's a, a, just an actual grading factor for those and so you know there's a number of different things that actually end up being a you know degrading factor when you get quite a bit of heat stress during seed fill okay I think